Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to do your toe on a footy or a sock or a slipper. And there are different ways to do the toe, but what I'm doing is I'm doing my toe the same way I do my heel. Now what I do is to mark your loom for your toe or your heel, don't that, put that down, you use half of your loom. Now this loom has 25 pegs on it, so that's an odd number. I prefer to keep my toe even. So I do from peg 1 to 12, and then I mark the middle two pegs of the side I'm doing my heel on for two reasons. First of all, it marks which side I do my heel on, and as you can see, this sock I'm doing inside out. So you can see I did a rib stitch pattern and I've just done a regular E wrap on this bottom part so that it's a flat, so it's flat. And to keep the pattern even and symmetrical, when doing the E wrap purl, E wrap purl, E wrap, you know, I have to have two pegs together or else we're gonna have two stitches together on this side. And as you can see, it's hard to tell, but there is a a bit, there's a bit of a difference. I can flip it inside out and show you better. There is a bit of a difference. Here you guys see there's going to be a wider spot where the two stitches are together. So I do that on the back of the heel so it runs up the back side of the leg, up the back side of the cuff, and it's really not that noticeable. All right, to do your toe, we are going to do it the same way you do your heels. So we are going to e wrap four rows from peg 1 to 12 on the side of the heel. Alright, and then you're going to take the bottom over the top, and like I said, you're going to do four rows. Alright, now we did four rows just from peg 1 to 4. We ignore the rest of this loom for the entire heel. And now we need to decrease each side in three so that the toe will taper at the top. Here's another one that's done. We want the toe to taper some, so we need to decrease. And how you do that is we've done our four rows. We've got the working yarn coming from peg one. We go over to peg 12, take the yarn off, and add to peg 11. This is just one of many ways you can do this. You e-wrap to your peg 11. Peg 12 is empty, it stays empty at this point. You have two loops on that one, you take them off, and then you're going to take the bottom over the top of all the rest back to peg one. Once you get back to peg one, you take the working yarn off of peg one and add to two. Now peg one and peg 12 are both empty. You push that down, and you e-wrap to peg one. Oh, sorry, you e-wrap to peg two. You're going to pull the bottom over the top. Of course, that one had two on it. The rest will just have one. Back to your last. And then you're going to take the loop from peg 11, put it on 10. Push all this down. E wrap back again. Take the bottom loops over the top. And you do this method until you have three empty on both sides. Right now we have two. There's two on this one. This is what it looks like when you have all three empty just the way it does for the heel. And then again, you're going to pick up the same as you do for a heel. So if you're not familiar with how the heel goes, you just take and pick up the yarn and put back on the loom at this point. And note that I am, I didn't pick up just the three empty ones. I did the one before and the one after. That closes everything off and it gives it a heel that doesn't have like the holes in it. Lots of times if you're not careful, when you're doing a heel, you might end up with a hole here and a hole here. 
uh, just with some of the various heel and toe methods. So you go over to the other side and you want to get the one closest up there and you pick it up. Alright, trying to get the whole thing. There we go. Pick it up, put it on. And you just go down the loom. And some of these might be a little tight, but that's fine. Okay. Now four pegs on this loom right now are going to have two loops on it, and that's perfectly fine. But that is how you do your toe. Now to close up the toe, from here, some of these pegs have more than one loop on it. So what you want to do is I just do one row of the pattern that I was doing before. So this back part was E-wrapped. And then I did a rib stitch on the front part, just the same as the rest. And you go back to your peg one. Don't um, go to the peg that the yarn is coming from. And that's fine. It's not going to make a difference missing those few pegs right there. But you want to go back to your peg one because we sew the toe up. And you want to make sure that you have, um, it just works better if you have it going from that one instead. Alright, once the yarn is back at peg one, go all the way around the loom and take any extra loops off so that every single peg only has one loop on it. If you end up with pegs that have extra, sometimes that can leave a bit of a bunch in the bind off. So that's why I do the extra row. So there we go. And there. Now at this point, you want to wrap the yarn, I'd say at least three times. Let's try through one, two, three times around just so that we have enough yarn to close this toe off. You can use a tapestry needle to do this next part, but it's really not necessary. What I do is I take my hook, and this is my peg one. It's where the yarn's coming from. We got the heel this side and the rest of the sock that side. You pull the yarn through it and take it off the loom. Then you go over to the last peg. Then you go back to the peg on the other side. We're going to zigzag across each time taking the loop off until we get to this very last loops on this loom. Which I'll do a few more and you can kind of see how it comes together. You can see it's starting to pull. It's going to pull all, right, all now that together. Now when you get together. to the last two on it, you can see where that's already starting to pull all that together. You go ahead and you just do the same. Just pull it through and then off the loom and then you do the same with your very last one. And there you go. Now at this point, here's the little magic trick. You take, oh, well, I've already pulled it tight. This is gonna be looped, but I pulled it tight while I was doing it. And you wanna kinda of pull that tight to pull out any little weird spots or bumps in it. Now this sock that I made, it's inside out. So I will weave all this in on this front side and flip it inside out. But if you are using the sock this way, then you'll want to f pull the string to the inside, flip it inside out, and weave it in so that you don't have any um, strands showing. That way everything truly does blend in and it's going to look very seamless. So There we go. This is our sock. 